Welcome to this video on subqueries in Microsoft Access. This is the last of our query topics. This one also can get a pretty complex. So again, I'm going to go to Excel to show you an example of what we're talking about here. So here's the same data we used last time. It's just five people, uh, made up salary, and a state. Now let's say I want to see which people pay or receive greater than the average salary. Now in Excel, we do that by first computing the average salary. You know how to do that. Then I would do a comparison to say if their salary is greater than the average salary. Uh, I'll turn the value of 1 or return the value of 0. I could copy that down and now I have that. So notice the steps. I first had to aggregate at one level and then I had to compare that aggregation back to what I was doing. In Access, you can consider this a subquery. The salary computation, computing the average, required a query to do that. We know how to do that. With totals, you just go in and take the data and get the average for the salary. It then required a decision-making query where you use the original data and you use the new data and compared them to come up with your final answer. All right, so let's talk, walk through how we would do this in Access. Actually, I'll leave those there. We're going to come back to this. All right, so here's the problem. Return all orders that exceed the average revenue amount for an order. In other words, return orders that will have greater revenue than the average revenue of an order. Display in the final query these fields in this order. Order number and total amount ordered. Now you'll notice up at the top I have three different names. This is a clue. This won't be on the practice and the homework. But here you're going to have to do three different queries. So let's think about this. What's the first query I need to run? Well, I need to return all orders that exceed the average revenue amount for an order. All right, to get the revenue for an order, I need to compute a query. Because right now, the revenue is recorded at the transaction level, or the, the order, different items on each order. So I'm going to have to first get the amount uh, for each order, the revenue. The second query, I'm then going to have to take that data and compute the average for all of those orders. And then finally, I'm going to have to compare those together and return what the question asks. So let's jump into Access and break this down. There's going to be three design queries. And the first thing I need to do is compute how much was returned for, or how much was revenue was earned for each order. All right, to do that, oh, I don't need to open it. I need to click and drag, order detail over. All right, so I want order number. And then to compute revenue, I'm going to, well, I'll go ahead and open up the builder. So it's a little bit easier to see. All right, and I'm going to do revenue per order. That's going to be, oh, I won't take a shortcut. I'll show you in here, order detail, price each times quantity ordered. All right, I have that revenue ordered. Now that's just going to compute the revenue per line item. So remember, if I run that, I'm going to have the 1,100 transactions. There's my revenue for each inventory number. So what I really need to do is aggregate that and sum those up. So now for every order, I can see the total revenue, 547 orders. Okay, That I'm going to save. So Control S, I'm just going to save this as one query so we can find it quickly over there. Puts it right there at the top. Now I need to go to my next query. All right. So now if you look at this query, I have the revenue total for each order. The next thing I need to do is figure out the average revenue for each order. So to do that, if I take that previous query in here, I can query my query. All right. So what do I need? I need the revenue per order, and I need to compute the average. So this should give me just one row. All right, the average order for my guitar company is $4,096. Okay, I'm going to save that as my second query. Now I'm ready to do the third query. 
Now, if you, if you think about this, let me display both of these. What I want it to do is I want it to say, hey, compare each of these lines to this amount here. If it's greater, return the amount. If it's less, get rid of it. So let's go ahead and create my third query in design view. To do this, I'm going to have to query my first query and my second query. All right, now how am I supposed to merge these? There's not two fields that are the same, so I can't merge them. Well, let's think back. If you remember your joins, if I don't merge them, it's going to combine every option here with every option in this, uh, in this query. Now, is that OK? Well, yeah, I, I can combine every single row here with every row here, because there's only one row here. So in this case, I don't need two different query or some connection between the queries, because there's only one box, and I'm going to combine them. So let me show you what that looks like. If I just put order revenue and average revenue in there, you'll see that I'm going to get my 547. And the average revenue is the same for every single row, which is just fine, because now I can do the comparison. So the comparison, uh, what I need to do, I'll open up Builder. Actually, I don't need to open up Builder. I need to come over here to my revenue per order. And I only want to display this if it's greater than the average of the revenue per order. Oh, it put it in quotes. I want it that field. OK. So show that. So now if I display this, I only have 212 records. And these are only shown if it's greater than that average revenue per order. So now I can clean things up. The final one didn't want that. And it wanted this one to be called total amount order. And there we have it. Here is the order number. And here's the total amount ordered. Again, I took three different queries to get this. First, I had to compute the revenue per order. This had nothing to do with subqueries. This is just a good review of aggregation. So it was a practice of aggregation. And I did that by just summing up the revenue, which is the price times the quantity for each order. Then I had to compute the average of all of these 547. I did that again, just another practice of, a, of aggregation. I just took the average of the revenue per order. In the final one, I combined those two queries so that I had order number, revenue per order, and the average of revenue per order all together. And I just displayed those where revenue per order was greater than the average of revenue per order. All right, so that's the first query. Let's do another practice one. I'm going to add one more wrinkle in. I'm going to go ahead and close these and delete those two. Our next query, return all orders that exceed the average revenue amount for an order in that year. OK, so it's the exact same as the previous problem, except it's in that year. Which means, in other words, return orders that will have greater revenue than the average revenue for an order from the same year. All right, so if we go back to what we had, now if you can think about it, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the, the query final. Before I had the total amount, but this is for, this compared it to this subquery, the average of the total amount. Now what I need to do is compare it to the average of the total amount for each year. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and start all over. Query and design view. The first thing I need to do is get oops, order detail. I don't need inventory. I need my order number. And I'm going to go ahead and just type it in here. Revenue per order. And it's going to be price each times quantity ordered. And Axis clean that up for me. So I've got each line item. I need to aggregate that and sum that up. All right, so that's for every order. Now there's one other thing I want to do here is I want to add in the date. We're going to need that a little bit later. Now to get to the date, I'm going to need my orders table. And now I have the order date. I'll click and drop that in. But I don't want the full date. I just want the year. So we're going to call it year and use the year formula. Now, will this change anything for how I've aggregated? No, 
Why? Because the year is the same as the order number. They're always going to be the same in that year. So I'm going to get the 547, but now I have the year that each order was placed. Okay, we'll save that again as just one query so I can quickly see it. All right, so now I know the order, the year, and the revenue per order. So I can do my second step. Create my query in design mode. Here I'm going to query my query. What I want to do here is compute the average order size per year. So if you remember last time I took revenue and then I just aggregated that to the average amount. That gave me the one number. It's the exact same number still. Well this time I need to know the average for each year. So if I click year down here and group by year, you see I'm going to get an average for 2019, 2020, and 2021. So I have these amounts. I need to use these to compare. So all I did was add year so that I'm grouping by year. Save this as my second query. Now I can go to my final one. Create the query in design mode. All right, I'm going to need query one, and I'm going to need query two. Now, last time I didn't combine the, these because there was only one option in query two. Let me run this and run this. So I didn't need to combine it because I just needed the same number here. This time, if I do that same thing, if I don't join them, I would increase, I would create a cross join, and that would triple the amount of data. So for example, if I put order, revenue, and average, instead of the 500 and some 47, I'm going to end up with 1641. Notice for each year, it combined each of the different years. Let me put year in there, and it'll make it a little bit more clear. You can see for 2019, it combined the revenue for 2019, 2020, and 2021. So that's a problem. That's not what I want. So what I need to do is join these table on year. All right. So now that I've done that, I can show my order number, my revenue per order, and then my average revenue per order. This is just to show you that see for, oh, let me put year in there to make it clear. For 2019, I get the same orders every single one. 2020, it then changes. So the average revenue per order changes for each year. So now what I can do is I can say, hey, I need revenue per order when it's greater than my average of revenue per order. All right. So when I run that, I've got my order number, the year it was ordered, the revenue per order, and it's only going to return when it's greater than this amount. You can quickly see all of those are greater than this. But then it changes the criteria. Here it's only going to return if it's greater than the average revenue per amount for that year. And then finally when you get down to 2021, once again it's a new amount. So rather than use the same amount, it now uses a different amount. And the reason it uses that different amount is because I joined the tables on year. To finalize, I just need to delete that so that I'm showing what the problem asked for. And then I do need to change the title here to total amount order so that when I run it, voila, there is my final answer. And that is how you use subqueries. Okay. So just let's summarize what we learned. Subqueries are important when we need to combine things and do calculations that are going to aggregate at different levels. So you notice I aggregated everything to the order here, but then I needed to compute a different amount. I needed an aggregation per year. And then I had to join that information back. Go ahead and work through the practice problems and the homework problems. This will make sense. And then bring any questions to class and we can go over even more.